Hello, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining me here. My name is Charity and this message is for Cancer. So in this reading, we're going to be looking at the energies of how the person who is on your mind is feeling about you right now. What they're thinking about you, what they like best about you in this connection, what they don't like as much, their hopes, fears, what's likely to happen, what they're likely to do next, and any advice Spirit has for you. For the main cards of the reading, I'll be using the Mystical Manga Tarot by Ran and Barbara Moore, and if clarifiers are needed, the Fortune Telling Tarot Deck by Yoshi Takamano. Several cards jump out, too many to take, but I did take a glance at them just to get an idea of some of these energies. So let's get started. Spirit, what is the heart of the matter? What is the person connected to or coming towards cancer thinking about them right now? What are they feeling? What are they feeling in their heart space? What do they like best about cancer and this connection with them? Oh my goodness, that one just flew. Let me grab it. And what don't they like as much? What don't they like as much? What don't they like as much? What are their highest hopes when it comes to this connection? And what are their deepest fears? What are their deepest fears? Now we're going to get three cards for what's likely to happen, what they're likely to do next, and any advice Spirit has for you. I'm going to lay those face down over here, and we will look at them together at the end. Okay. On the bottom of the deck, we do have the Ten of Pentacles. Virgo energy could be significant, but there could absolutely be somebody who is thinking about you that feels like you are somebody that they could get serious with, somebody they could commit to, somebody they could really see a potential fe uh, like future with. There's something about you, about this connection that feels, you know, like stable to them, maybe feels like like home, they like being around you, they like seeing you, they like talking to you. And I feel like, you know, these are bottom of the deck energies. So they are energies for me that somebody is feeling. The underlying energy is honestly the whole reading that somebody is aware of, but at times hasn't like fully explored or expressed. It's like energy that they could be feeling, but maybe they have not let you know. And I think it is quite possible there could to be something maybe that this person has not expressed to you because their energies like all the cards that jumped out I'd have to say are pretty challenging so just a heads up this is somebody that could be feeling really bad about like something that happened between you maybe the left way they left things or maybe they're just missing you if they don't get to see you as often as they would like but the heart of the matter what they're thinking about the connection is the three of swords libra energy could be significant strong in this um in your person's chart or in yours but this is somebody that just can't stop thinking about something, maybe something that went wrong, something they said, something they did, something that happened between the two of you. Now, the three of swords, you know, swords are thoughts. It's really about the way that we can, you know, make ourselves miserable thinking over and over thoughts that just trip us up or that are painful. So I feel like this person, and we'll definitely pull a clarifier to see what this is all about, could like literally be crying like over you. Now, obviously that's not the case for everyone. Many, many of you are in all different kinds of connections. Some of you are, have newly met. Some of you are flirting with somebody. Some of you are, you know, in a connection or some of you haven't even met your person yet. I'm sure there are many, many of you, you know, that are watching this reading that that don't you know have somebody who feels like maybe they made some sort of big mistake or disappointed you know um like disappointed you or something like that but I have to read the energies that come through and just take them as they are so um so of course take what's yours leave what's not for someone else who is meant to hear that message if you are dealing with someone though and things seem fine things um seem okay there could also just be some sort of pain or overthinking or stress or something in their past that's kind of creeping up on them maybe a little bit as they get you know more interested and more involved with you there could be some of their old fears and doubts coming up because maybe they have 
have been hurt in the past. Clarifying this Three of Swords, we do have the Moon. Pisces energy, for me, also a lot of Cancer energy because Cancer is ruled by the Moon and has a lot to do with like water and emotions and deep feelings and all of that. Now, this person could be upset about something that maybe they are thinking about you or this connection that could honestly be an illusion. I mean, they could be somebody that, you know, could be looking at your social media, maybe making guesses, you know, thinking that you've got all kinds of things going on or interested in other people, things like that, because I do see a little bit of that energy of them like trying to figure out what's going on. Could be somebody who is literally jumping to conclusions and, um, and what they're thinking is not actually what's happening because the moon can be about illusions. It can be about things seeming one way, but actually being another. But, you know, as humans, we tend to see things the way that we expect to see them. And if this is somebody who has been hurt or betrayed or disappointed, I feel like they're kind of bringing that, like maybe a little bit of that, like past energy um, into this connection if nothing has happened between the two of you. And for some of you, there is. And the moon can also be secrets. It can be somebody who's, you know, confused about, you know, what to do, what to say. Um, it can be somebody who's feeling a lot of emotions and maybe emotions they didn't, you know, expect to feel. We do have it sitting right next to the world card, which we'll talk about um, coming up and what they don't like as much about the connection. And some of you could literally just be long distance or have such a challenge in the connection like a cultural difference or maybe friend groups or family groups that don't agree on things that they are feeling like it's impossible but also there's a lot of information to come from the first couple cards but these cards are kind of intense you know and um you just can never downplay this kind of energy when the three swords comes up there's there's some sort of pain and, and difficulty involved um but in some cases, because the moon can be like a secret of energy, this person is hurting or in pain because they're holding something back. Maybe something they want to tell you, maybe something they want to say. Now, what they're feeling about you is the five of pentacles. And I don't even know if I've ever had a reading start off with these two cards. Like, this is some heavy energy. This is somebody who could be missing you, longing you, maybe feeling on the outside, maybe feeling like they don't even have a chance or they missed their chance. Now, the Five of Pentacles, oh, and Taurus energy could be significant here. The Five of Pentacles really is kind of another card about like self-fulfilled prophecy or we see what we expect to see because this church window represents the potential of the union. Like you could be interested in this person and they might not even realize it if they you know, have like, who knows, like abandonment issues or hurt or pain or anything like that, making them feel unloved or unlovable, you could completely be fine because this, you know, and be interested and they might not even realize it. Um, obviously, it's not the case for all of you, but that window represents all the things the universe is wanting to provide, all the things that, you know, um, maybe you could be feeling for this person, the potential of the connection. This represents the warmth, the light, all of the good things when it comes to finances. It represents all the potential, you know, of the uh, like abundant blessings the universe wants to give you. But if you're looking, you know, at what's wrong, at the difficulties, at the disappointments, it could all be right there, but you're not going to see it. And I feel like there's something this person person could just be missing about this because maybe they feel like, you know, maybe they're, they feel like because of what they've been through, they, you know, they're afraid to trust in love or they can't be loved. And, um, and as I said, it is a heavy duty energy. And I know, I know many, many of you are not dealing with somebody going through this, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with it and read the cards for what they are. So, um, and this is somebody who is feeling pretty, pretty discouraged. Spirit, why do we have the Five of Pentacles here? Why do we have the Five of Pentacles? Seven of Cups, my goodness. We do have the star on the bottom of the deck and we have the Ten of Pentacles earlier, which there are incredibly positive energies on the bottom of the deck here. Underneath all this, I think there is like this sense that this person knows that there is potential, this is possible, there is a chance. It's almost like their mind is just struggling to believe something their heart might already know. Um, Aquarius energy with a star, but this is somebody who has, they've been through a challenge. Star 
comes after the tower and the journey, the fool's journey of the whole major arcana. And it is somebody who's rising from the ashes of a really challenging time. I mean, in some cases, maybe the two of you parted ways and they're just like missing you, but they're also kind of finding themselves in the process. This is somebody who is, you know, learning more and more about who they are, which I feel like has a lot to, you know, relationships have a lot to do with that. And uh, I feel like we learn from our connections and the people we are, are attracted to and the people we attract in more about who we truly are. This person could be learning some things that they don't necessarily really want to learn about themselves, but I feel like they're accepting it. And I do feel like they're kind of growing from this whole process, whatever it is. But we have the Five of Cups clarified by the Seven of Cups. Scorpio energy could be significant, but this is somebody that could be thinking that um, the idea or the potential or the possibility of the two of you is like a fantasy. Like, is it even possible? Am I dreaming? Am I wishing? Am I imagining this? They're questioning themselves. They're second guessing themselves. And I feel like they just aren't really sure. There's a lot of confusion with the moon and the seven of cups. I feel like in one sense, this person really wants to believe that it's possible, but then like their fears and doubts creep up. And because the seven of cups is somebody who's being kind of pulled this way and that and isn't, you know, really focusing on one thing long enough to manifest it. It's almost as if they think about all the potential and then they get overwhelmed and think, oh, well, this went wrong and that went wrong. And I don't know if this is really possible. Um, and, um, and could even be like feeling kind of discouraged. But what they like best about you is the page of swords, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. Um, I have to say they like thinking about you. If you have social media or something like that, they definitely like looking at your pictures. This is somebody who is very curious about you, somebody who wants to know more and their feelings for you. Some of it may be a little bit, you know, secretive because sometimes the page of swords can be like secrecy. And we also have the moon here, but it's almost like they like, like they like the way they feel. They like, you know, thinking about you and, um, and there's this whole aspect of being on the outside that it's almost like they've kind of gotten a little used to it. Like maybe there's some sort of situation, like a work situation, or once again, like, you know, family or distance that makes it like, well, this isn't possible. Like I can't really, you know, take this step, but they still like thinking about the potential of what can be. But let's go ahead and see what this page of swords is. But they like know, getting to know more about you. They like thinking about you. Spirit, why do we have the page of swords? Oh my goodness. Okay, Hierophant just jumped out. Not some serious energy. Taurus energy could be significant. For some of you, a few different things, okay? Some of you could be committed to somebody else. Uh, and I mean, I just feel like with the page of swords and the Hierophant coming up here, this person could be really interested in you, but think that you are maybe interested in somebody else or even committed to somebody else. I don't know if that's necessarily the case because there's something about illusions here that they don't really know maybe the whole story of what's going on. Um, but that could be it. The other thing though, with the higher font here is that this person, being, you know, what they like about you, they're curious about you, wanting to know more about you because like that 10 of pentacles in the beginning, they do feel like you're somebody they could commit to. You are somebody they could be happy with. The higher font energy for me is somebody that, you know, you want to just tell the whole world. You want to stand up because I, to me, I see like weddings, long-term commitments, you know, uh, introducing somebody to friends and family. This is like social circles and um, work, religious organizations, like things like that. But when it comes up in a relationship, it's like you want to share this person with your world, with your life. You want to bring them home. You want to make a commitment. You want everyone to know that the two of you are together. And um, and yet this person feels like there could be, you know, some sort of challenge coming in between that. And maybe they haven't even told you with all the secrecy energy that they do feel like that could be possible with the higher font there. So what they don't like as much is the world card. Um, all the fixed energies here, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus could be significant, but some of you could be 
long distance, some of you could mainly communicate on the internet and this could like stress them out. If they see you like talking and interacting or think that you're interested in other people, they could even be like a little jealous. And I'm trying, I'm not trying to like be hard on this person. You guys watch my readings. Those of you that are like familiar with these and if you're new, definitely check out some different placements if this isn't um, resonating. But um, I like to keep things light. I like to keep things positive. But when there's a heavy energy, I'll read a heavy energy because I'm an honest, you know, I'm an honest reader and I like to, you know, tell the truth about what is coming through. Um, but, you know, I'm not trying to be that so hard on this person, but the cards are challenging. So um, whatever the case is, this person could be feeling like the gap between you. And, you know, you could see each other every day. You could work together. And, yeah, I mean, you, you could have class together, something like that. You know, you could be see each other at the gym or with groups of friends. You know, it's and like I said, different for all of you. Some of you only, you know, mostly talk to this person online. Um, but whatever that is, they feel the connection. They feel it really strong. This red ribbon always reminds me of the red thread. Connect souls, soulmates, people who are meant to meet. They feel the connection. They feel the significance of it. I don't feel like they can stop thinking about you even if things have, you know, not worked out or if it's something is like challenging about this connection, but it's almost like it's hard for them. It's hard for them to feel like, you know, almost feel like they don't know like how to close the gap or how to make this possible or how to make this work. Spirit, why do we have the world card and what they don't like as much about the connection? The Ten of Wands. Okay, I do see the Seven of Pentacles here on the bottom of the deck and we have the Emperor kind of showing up here. Taurus and Aries energy could be significant, but if some of you are dealing with a strong soul connection, you know, twin flame, something like that, because sometimes Emperor, Empress lovers can, you know, be that. I really like to keep these readings general though. It's really just somebody that feels very sure the two of you could be a match. But if some of you are, this person could be waiting for a chance or waiting for an opportunity to, you know, cross the distance, close the gap and come together. But with the emperor here, there is something about this person that even if it doesn't make sense, even if there's been challenges, they feel like this could be it. This is something that they've been waiting for or even something that they feel is worth waiting for. I do feel like they do want to, you know, really take a chance and see what can happen. We have the world card clarified by the 10 of wands. Sagittarius energy could be significant, but um, this is somebody because the world and the 10 of wands are all about wrapping up cycles and ending cycles. And, you know, they're about completion, success. This could be somebody. Um, now, sometimes the 10 of wands is somebody who works a lot or is really busy or has a lot of responsibilities and a lot on their plate. They could just have to travel a lot for their job and miss you when they're traveling. You know, it's specific, but it is, you know, a potential there. But I almost feel like this is somebody that feels like distant from you because they've, you know, maybe you or them have so much going on. You just don't get to see each other as much as you would really like to. If it is somebody that you're beginning to know or getting more serious with, and there's just like a lot going on and you don't get to see each other as much as you'd like, I feel like they want to wrap up, you know, cycles, busy cycles, burdensome cycles, challenging cycles. And Honestly, the Ten of Wands can be like a homecoming because it's somebody who is, you know, in the traditional tarot is carrying so many wands in front of their face. They can't see in front of them, but they're almost to the home. They're almost to, you know, the castle or however it's drawn. It's almost like this person, you know, could be feeling kind of tired and weary and frustrated with the distance or the difference or the challenges. And they just want to come home to you. I mean, that Ten of Pentacles, there's something about you from the very beginning that feels like home to them. And they want that. Their highest hopes are the five of swords in reverse. And I do make sure all the cards are upright before I start a reading. But if they jump out in reverse, I read them that way. And the five of swords, I have to say, it is a better card when it comes up in reverse. The five of swords upright is overthinking, stress, conflict, you know, um, miscommunication. It can be somebody wanting to be right, you know, for pointless reasons. It can be like pointless, you know, going around and around, difficulties, arguments, and drama, things like that. Um, it can also be, you know, somebody walking away from a situation because they're tired of the stress of it. And yet with the five of swords in reverse, it is the energy of wanting to move past that 
wanting to move past pettiness, wanting to move past drama. If there has been difficulties, they do want to put that, you know, they do want to put that in the past. This could be somebody that really wants to make peace. And this being swords, if it only is their own internal, you know, conflict or their own drama in their own personal life that is kind of keeping them from being able to really take the steps forward they want to take, they could be trying to overcome some of that. Some of this maybe chaos or hectic stuff that they have going on, or maybe even their overthinking. But I do feel like this is somebody, you know, in, it's funny, I almost slipped into Spanish there. Um, somebody who instead of, you know, going around in circles or maybe, you know, disagreeing with you does want to, you know, solve things, make peace, come together, have honest and open conversations. Um, so spirit, why do we have the five of swords in reverse for their highest hopes? We have the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, it's clear. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy could be significant here. And this is a positive energy. This is somebody who could want to, you know, offer something, take a step forward, start something, um, get together, maybe talk. This is a very tangible kind of energy. So if the two of you, you know, see each other mostly online, they could be wanting to just, you know, talk or FaceTime or see you or meet up or just, you know, do something, something to show you how they feel something to show you and I just heard the word olive branch so that's odd I don't know if I've ever had that come in some some could be reaching out because they want to extend the olive branch they want to make things right but for me this ace of pentacles is the cornerstone of the ten of pentacles and it is clear with the ten of pentacles and the higher font here whatever the situation is this person does feel like you are somebody that they really could see themselves with and I think they do want a fresh start that is going to lead in the direction of the two of you being together and potentially long term. Their deepest fears are the three of pentacles. Capricorn energy could be significant, but it's interesting to me because sometimes with the three of pentacles, I feel like just work um, friends or just colleagues or just friends, you know, or just seeing each other around the gym and just, or, you know, at classes or among friends and, and continuing on like that. You know, it's, it's not like it's somebody who wants to invest, somebody who is interested, but it's almost like they want to move past if things have gotten a little cool or distant um, between the two of you, or, you know, if your connection, you know, started out more intense and, you know, things happened and it got a little more quiet or, you know, a little more distant or something like that. I feel like that's not where they want to be. I think they definitely want to move, you know, past that. If there's a working relationship or you just talk because you have certain things in common, it's clear. I feel like this person wants more one-on-one. -on -one. They want more intimacy. They want to be more in your life. I feel like they don't want to be like just another person you, you know, you kind of see around or talk to. I think they really do hope that, you know, um, you want to you want to move for move further and they feel like this is a connection that they would like to you know invest in and explore five of wands on the bottom of the deck we'll talk about the clarifier in a second because it's actually pretty positive but um leo energy could be significant here but this is somebody once again five of wands five of swords they both have to do with conflict this is more about somebody wanting to take action though and not really knowing you know the direction to take or what to do and feeling conflicted and frustrated um, they do have the three of pentacles clarified by the eight of wands. Eight of wands, Sagittarius energy could be significant, but it is forward movement. It is talking. It is communication. It can be, you know, taking things to the next level. It can be, you know, messages just out of nowhere. And this can be, you know, going from friends to really moving forward. And yet it seems like there is something about them feeling like, you know, what if that's not possible? What if I take this step and maybe you don't want to move forward because they are really interested. I mean, with the eight of wands, that can be, that can be somebody just wanting to like get much more serious much more quickly and that might not be necessarily what you know what you're wanting so now we're going to look at what's likely to happen what they're likely to do next any advice spirit has for you
So what is likely to happen? Six of Pentacles. Interesting. Okay, Taurus energy could be significant, but this is positive. I really like this for um, a love reading because it's all about balance. It's all about equal give and take. It is two people that feel the same for one another, both really showing up, both really putting in the time and the energy. And, um, and I feel like even though there's been a lot of challenging energy here, and I don't know what these other two cards are, hold I feel like with what's like likely to happen being like things balancing out and coming together is extremely positive um it's interesting because that with all of this kind of challenging and overthinking energy to have such a positive potential outcome of both people really deciding to you know do what it takes and I just heard meet halfway. I don't know if you're like long distance and they just want to meet halfway. <laughs> Obviously, that's, you know, that's so specific. But um, but whatever the, whatever the situation is, I feel like this is somebody who wants to see more of you, wants to talk to you, wants to be around you, and is hoping that if they put in, you know, um, put in the communication or the energy or take the chance that there will be equal reciprocation, that you are going to feel the same. So what are they likely to do? King of Cups. Okay, this just got a lot better. <laughs> Pisces energy. And I do hope that people are still hanging out, especially with all the kind of heavy energies that started at the beginning. Sometimes we just have to work through that stuff. Sometimes when you really fall for someone and your heart begins to open up, sometimes all that old stuff gets stirred up. I mean, it's just kind of part of the process. When you open up your heart, you got to be ready to be vulnerable. You got to be ready to take the chance. This could work or it might not work. I've been hurt. I could be hurt again. But when you really care for someone, when you really have those feelings it's worth the chance it's worth taking a shot it's worth overcoming you know those doubts and stepping forward the king of cups is a beautiful energy pisces could be significant pisces season could be significant the way this all started out with the moon and we're getting ready to go into pisces season here pretty um pretty quick um, or maybe did we just open? I don't remember the exact first day of Pisces season. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I know all this stuff, but sometimes when I'm channeling, I just forget like little facts and details, but um, I'm just in a whole different place. But either way, we are right on the verge and there could be a big offer and a big opportunity um, for love coming up extremely soon. And with the King of Cups being somebody, um, what somebody is likely to do, this is somebody who is ready to open up. This for me is like an emotionally mature energy. It is somebody who when they make an offer, they do have what it takes to back it up. It is somebody that wants to let you know what they're feeling and bring things out to the open and take this step forward. And with this six of pentacles here i mean i feel this is somebody that you feel this way for too because this is the potential outcome this is what they're likely to happen i do feel like you know when the two of you really take that take that step to you know do whatever it is that's coming up next because of that king of cups i feel like something really good really positive is coming up i feel like it is going to be mutual like i do and um and I think this person, I mean, I think their feelings for you run much more deep than maybe you even know. And maybe that is why there's all this sensitivity. You know, it's almost like the more you love someone, the almost like scarier it is that you could lose them because you just love them so much. And obviously we can't live in our fears and our doubts and let us rule that. But we are human. You know, stuff comes up. I mean, it just it just happens. So what is your advice? King of Coins. Interesting. Virgo energy could be significant here. But with the King of Coins, this is the energy of really investing in what's important to you. It is the potential, like, um, somebody who is, like, potentially, like, ready to commit somebody who is serious, somebody who is dedicated, um, very earthy energy. And really, even though um, a lot of people read Kings as Kings a little di bit differently, um, 
the way that I read the cards, it's like the way that it goes back with Rider Way, although there's been a lot of talk about this. Um, I read the Queens as car um, Cardinal, the Knights as Fixed, and the Kings as the Mutable Energies, because Mutable Energies are the end of the season, a more mature kind of energy. But um, So I read this as Pisces, and Virgo Energy doesn't mean that has to be their sign. It's just kind of the way they're coming forward from the heart, very you know caring and genuine. Um, but it can be Capricorn, Taurus, and also... Um, Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer here. So um, I don't know why I was felt guided to say that, but maybe that was specific to somebody. But anyway, there's something about this King of Coins. I don't know. I'm going to pull a clarifier. I don't know if it's like setting intentions for, you know, the kind of person that shows up not just from the heart, but with this, you know, knowledge that this is something that's really, you know, worth just going for, exploring, and seeing through. Like the King of Pentacles sees things through. Let's go ahead and see. Why is that our advice? Spirit, why do we have the King of Coins as our advice? Why do we have the King of Coins? Okay, we just had, wow, we just had the judgment card. Okay, this is pretty incredible. And as I said, so you could be dealing with a strong soul connection on the bottom of the deck. My goodness, the energies that are coming out. I just have to show this to you guys. And I'm going to take these cards out, but I just want you to see the way that they are showing through. I can't even believe this. Like we have the emperor, the empress the Ace of Cups, and the Magician. I'm going to go ahead and take them out and talk to you about them along with that Judgment card. Okay. And after I took all those cards out, we do have the High Priestess on the bottom of the deck, Pisces, Cancer, and Virgo for me as a reader. But I do feel like somebody is thinking very deeply about you. Maybe they have been quiet about things. I feel like that is definitely going to shift. Um, I think intuitively, even if they aren't like a spiritual person that uses the words intuitive, you know, or like, or, you know, or that, or, um, psychic and things like that. Not everybody is really, you know, into that, that specific phrasing, but regardless, intuitively, they know, they know there's something more to this connection. They know, it's like they know that the two of you met for a reason. Clarifying the King of Coins, we have the Judgment card. The Judgment card is a turning point. When the Judgment card comes up, it's like some of the challenges of the past are going to be behind you once and for all. Your guides, your universe is blowing the trumpet and saying, this is your moment. Things begin to get better. Um, people, you know, begin to open up. If you're looking at a connection, um, they put the past in the past. It can be... Um, it can be making peace. At sometimes it can be resurrecting something. Obviously, it's not the case for you know many people um, because this can be like a completely new energy. But it is a turning point, and I feel like it's a turning point because what you have attracted in is not only somebody who comes forward from the heart and is a beautiful match for your energy, um, because Cancer is like the Queen of Cups energy. It is somebody who is ready to stand by their word, who is ready to, to really show up in the way that we all deserve someone to show up. And we all should show up for those that we love. It's just a genuine, you know, caring, lasting kind of energy. And I feel like if you are giving this, then you are going to receive that energy. And that could be what the advice is all about there. But this is a turning point. And if you're, you know, you're watching this and you think, I don't have anybody in my life like that, um, set some intentions with this magician card because with the Ace of Cups, the Emperor and the Emperor, you could be attracting in somebody in the very near future that is absolutely a match for you. So with the magician, it was on the bottom of the deck, um, Aries and Gemini energy. Aries here for our Emperor, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces could be significant for the Ace of Cups and then Taurus and Libra for the Empress. But with the magician, there is something here about setting intentions that is absolutely key. Really think about and just feel yourself into the feeling of what it is you really want because there's something about you setting intentions and just really claiming the kind of connection, the kind of energy, and the kind of love that you are want and are ready for that is bringing something towards you. 
I mean, this can be a new beginning between two people that have maybe known and been connected to each other for a bit, you know, really having an awakening and a realization about what this means to both of you and taking it to the next level with the Emperor Empress here. This can be drawing in and attracting somebody who really sees you and is a match for you. It can be just two people coming together with the judgment card um, to really make some important decisions about moving forward in a really positive way. I mean, this is this is incredible, these cards, uh, wrapping this up. To start with such challenging energies at the beginning and to wrap up with some of the most beautiful and powerful energies when it comes to a love reading, I do feel like, you know, some of you could be falling hard for somebody and somebody could be falling hard for you, but it's a match. And for me, the emperor empress is the kind of person when you meet them, I don't know, it just kind of clicks why the other things maybe didn't work out the way that, you know, you thought you would, or you hoped you would. It's all been kind of part of the process of bringing you, you know, to this moment, to this experience and everything makes a little more sense. Everything feels a little more right. And you just know, this is somebody I could see myself with. Beautiful reading. I love it. I do hope that something in this spoke to every single person who was guided to this message. And um, and if you enjoyed it, please put a like on it. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love if you would. If something spoke to you and you'd like a personal reading, my website is charitygenese.com. And if you're interested in bonus content throughout the month, collective love readings for the new moon, full moon, and other messages in between, my Patreon is open. It's new, but I would love to connect with you all there. So. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of February and I will be bringing your March readings, your you and the March readings very soon. Love you guys.